So, here, look, I have raised concerns in the past about the, this bill's draconian implications, which are just as worrying as the hate speech bill in terms of their impact for civil liberties. I I'm glad to co-sign these amendments with Senator Mullen because I believe they are at least go some distance in making this bill less restrictive. Each amendment draws attention to a particular deficiency within the current legislation, which needs to be recognised by the public and reflected upon. However, I must emphasise that I still disagree with the principle of this bill, which is not being introduced to curb harassment, which is already a crime under existing public order law, but rather to target and smear a particular ethical and moral viewpoint. So amendments number one and five are interrelated. They seek to ensure freedom of speech in higher education institutions. It's of concern to me that in the current wording, a college dispensary would be considered a valid safe access zone. As a zone uh, affects any entryway into a designated premises, this could mean that potentially several 100 metre zones could be created along entrances into college campuses. Since any efforts to influence someone's decision to have an abortion is criminalised under this law, it would be hard to argue that a pro-life speaker in a debate would not essentially be urging their listeners to reconsider their position on abortion. This would, at the very least, create a chilling effect. Therefore, these amendments at least attempt to guarantee freedom of speech in higher education institutions, which should be a bastion for free expression and debate. Gurmagath, uh, and uh, can I thank all uh, colleagues for their, um, for their contributions. It, it is a, a timely debate here in the Shannon today, and I'd like to acknowledge the support uh, broadly uh, across the Shannon. I know obviously there are those who disagree and fully respect that, uh, but broad support in the Shannon, broad support in uh, the Dáil. Uh, the bill has passed all stages in the Dáil and we're now obviously here for a um, committee stage in the Shannon. It, it, is a, it is a timely day for us to be having this debate. I had the great, um, the great pleasure really of being able to bring a memo to government this morning on women's health care, which is very relevant to this bill. Uh, colleagues will be aware that in uh, 2022 we launched our first year, our first ever uh, Women's Health Action Plan, a two-year plan. We're one of the only countries in the world to have done it, and I just want to acknowledge the work of healthcare workers and my officials as well, right across the country. If um, if if all aspects of healthcare were picked up and run with with the gusto that the Women's Health Action Plan was, I tell you, we'd be having a, so a, certainly less. Uh, debates in this chamber about things that need to be um, need to be fixed. It was. Um, I'm just happy to report to colleagues that the the progress over the last two years has been uh, very important. And this bill really is a, another important step in ensuring uh, not just that we have fit for purpose healthcare services for women in Ireland, um, but our ambition into the future is to be recognised <laughs> around the world as one of the most progressive, most advanced. Uh, countries in terms of high quality, accessible healthcare services for women. Um, and we're on the way and we'll be launching a new two-year Women's Health Action Plan uh, soon. And uh, I'll, I'll very much look forward to coming back and updating uh, colleagues on that. And really what we have here today is part of this new philosophy that says women must be able to have access to the best healthcare services uh, that, that, that can be provided. Um, be it maternity care or endometriosis or the perinatal mental health teams or uh, advanced menopause treatments and, and services which we're, which we're putting in place, the see and treat gynecology clinics, etc. And critically and probably uniquely when it comes to uh, access to termination of pregnancy services, there's an extra layer we need, um, which is to make sure that women have unimpeded access and they can't be harassed and they can't be bullied and they can't be intimidated and they can't have people trying to influence what a Senator Garvey has said is never an easy decision um, for, uh, for any woman to make. Um, I was in Sligo University Hospital on Friday to open the 16th Sea and Treat Gynecology Clinic. Believe it or not, the healthcare workers there through this new approach have reduced the waiting list for women to access gynecology services from four years can you imagine from, your, from a GP referral to see a, see a hospital-based gynaecologist, the waiting list was four years. It's now four weeks. That's our ambition in women's healthcare. But of course, no woman going to access the see and treat gynae clinic in Sligo University Hospital walks in there 
afraid of being threatened or abused or harassed or bullied or intimidated or any of those things. It's just not part of the service. Uniquely, I think, hopefully uniquely, when it comes to termination of pregnancy services, uh, unfortunately, very regrettably, uh, we know from reports right across the country, we know from listening very careful, carefully to women themselves, we know, we know from listening to our healthcare workers, uh, that unfortunately, in some cases, women are being harassed, uh, they are being intimidated, they are being abused, and, uh, and we've seen similar attempted coercive behaviour, some very unpleasant behaviour directed towards our healthcare professionals as well. And uh, my position, and I know uh, uh, the vast majority of people believe that that is completely unacceptable. Any man, woman or child in our republic must be able to access all healthcare services without any uh, sense of concern for any of the issues uh, that we have raised here. That goes for termination of pregnancy services along with everything else. And so whilst I want to acknowledge the, um, some of the intent behind the, the uh, tabling of these two motions, which essentially goes to say, we must have open and free debate in our republic, and we must, and we must have open and free, uh, free debate in our, uh, in our universities, in our colleges, in our, in our institutes of higher education, and we must, and in our secondary schools, and everywhere else as well, we must. Um, this bill uh, imposes a very modest requirement for any higher education authority. All it says is this. It says, if you have a health centre, if you have GPs uh, on site, if you have health services on site, the ones that qualify in terms of uh, termination of pregnancy services, uh, the ability to access um, uh, the uh, in medications uh, and so forth, if you have those on your campus, women must be able to access them without any worry that they're going to be harassed or intimidated or interfered with in any way. These are not easy times. It's not an easy thing for a woman to do. And my view, and and what is enshrined in the legislation is very modest. It says, of course, there should be debate on all manner of things in our higher education authorities, including termination of pregnancy services, including um, uh, any d debate on abortion and a wide range of other uh, issues which we deal with here in the Oireachtas all the time and are debated in universities, uh, higher education uh, institutes as they should be. All we're saying is, just don't have that debate within 100 metres of where women need to access services. That's it. No one's saying you can't debate it. Fill your boots. Debate it. Say what you want to say. Be, be as, be as um, antagonistic or as thought-provoking or whatever it is. Let's engage in rigorous debate. Just don't do it within 100 metres of where women are trying to access services. That's it. That's all we're asking. And so for those reasons, I, um, I can't accept the amendments. Uh, I fully support freedom of speech, fully support rigorous debate in our, in our colleges. But if we're having a debate about whether or not a woman who could be walking across a campus is in somehow, uh, should not be for whatever reason, accessing healthcare services, if that's the debate you wanna have about her choice, we're not saying don't have the debate, we're saying give her 100 metres so she can access her healthcare services. That's it. That's it. That's all we're, that's all we're doing. Um, I, furthermore, uh, I've asked my officials to engage with the Department of Higher Education such that if there is a higher education authority, whereby through the layout of their campus, it really does potentially become an issue in terms of having the kind of debates we must have in our society, we must have in our colleges, that we would work with the colleges to, uh, to, um, uh, to that effect. Thank you.